Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2021 Chrysler Pacifica, we're gonna be showing you how to install the draw tight max frame trailer hitch receiver. But before we do that, why don't we check it out and make sure that this is something that's gonna work for you. So these Pacificas are really capable vehicles. You know, I see people doing uh, a little bit of everything with them, pulling a trailer, using accessories, and so on. And not to mention they look really good too. You know, they've came a long way as far as the appearance goes. You know, they're actually pretty sporty looking. And so honestly, I think if I was looking for a hitch for a Pacifica, uh, two things would come to mind. Is it gonna be able to perform well? You know, is, are we gonna be able to use it to tow or use our accessories and so on? And is it gonna look good? And honestly, I think this hitch checks both those boxes. There is a big question I wanna address. Uh, a lot of people are asking, you know, what's the difference between the hybrid model like we have here today and the standard gas model and honestly as far as the hitch goes it's the same hitch uh, with the hybrid model like we have here today it's gonna have a, a canister um, over here on the driver's side and it's gonna be in the way of the hitch a little bit and so the only difference with this setup for the hybrid is they give you a couple of brackets that'll kind of move that canister over uh, that way the hitch will go into place and everything will work right. A lot of people also ask about the hands-free liftgate assist feature and if the hitch is going to interfere with it. And the answer is no, it will still work properly. You're just going to have to kick your foot to either side of the hitch. So whenever you kick it to that side, the hatch will open up like it originally did. The hitch is going to be completely hidden for the most part. You know, you're really just going to be able to see the receiver tube opening here. And it's also going to sit up nice and tight against the bottom of our vehicle. You know, these vans don't have a ton of ground clearance. And so with everything being up, you know, that's going to help out with that. It is going to be a class three. So it's going to have that two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. Super common size and a ton of different accessories will work with it. It's going to have a reinforced collar at the end for some extra strength. And it's also going to utilize that standard 5 8 pin hole. Keep in mind, pin and clip do not come included, but you can grab one here at E-Trigger. You have plate style safety chain openings, which uh, sit, a little, sit a little bit further back. Uh, really wouldn't bother me. It's kind of nice that we have a ton of clearance from our pin and clip. So should be able to use pretty much any size hook that we might have. And kind of as a bonus, over here, there's going to be a bracket that's already attached to the hitch, and that's there to mount up any trailer wire. So if you plan on doing some towing, uh, pretty convenient. You know, whenever you are pulling a trailer, you want the lights to work, and you can achieve that by grabbing some trailer wire. You can find that right here at each trailer. The hitch is gonna offer us some really good weight capacities. As far as the maximum gross tongue weight rating goes, that's gonna be 675 pounds. That's gonna be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch. So, like I said, really high number. You should be able to use pretty much any size bike rack or cargo carrier that you'd want to, for example. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's gonna be 4,500 pounds. And that's gonna be the amount of weight that's pulling on the hitch. So it is the weight of the trailer plus anything that you might have on it. This can be used with the weight distribution system, which is a separate component. And whenever you use that, uh, what it's gonna do is help keep your Chrysler and your trailer nice and level whenever you're towing it down the road. But whenever you use a weight distribution system, the weight capacity for the tongue is gonna remain the same at 675. However, the maximum gross trailer weight rating is going to get bumped up to 5,000 pounds. But always like to suggest never a bad idea just to grab your owner's manual that way you can check and make sure your pacifica can pull that much weight safely now i'm going to give you a couple of measurements and you can use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories to get from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening that's going to be about 13 inches so if you do plan on doing some towing chances are pretty good you're going to need to get a ball mount in a rise position from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, that's gonna be about five inches. And you can use that measurement to figure out exactly if any of those folding accessories that you might have can indeed be stored in that upright position without contacting the bumper. 
So when it comes down to it, what more could you really ask out of the hitch? You know, not only is it gonna look good, but it's gonna be able to handle pretty much anything you wanna throw at it. Now, as far as the installation goes, I'm not gonna lie, it can be a little tricky. It's really not so much that it's difficult per se, but everything's kind of tight underneath there, so it just uh, takes a little bit more time. Uh, with that being said, as long as you stay patient, you should be able to get it done at home. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be underneath the back of our van, and the first thing we need to do is remove this underbody panel. So this thing's gonna be held in place with a bunch of different type of fasteners. So we're just gonna kind of run through them here. The first ones that we're gonna start with uh, will look like this. There's gonna be several of them. And we're gonna pull all of those off using a 10 millimeter socket. So these are just gonna be kind of scattered throughout here. So we'll just kind of work our way around. Looks like there'll be two up there, but this is in the way, so we'll pull those off as well. And as of right now, that looks like we got all of those types of fasteners. Now we can work on these types of fasteners. They're gonna have an eight millimeter head. Looks like they're gonna be kind of just along the edges. But again, like the last ones, we'll kind of just work our way around and get them pulled out. So you'll see some that kind of look the same in these areas, but they're not actually holding the underbody panel on. So what you can do is kind of push up on the panel and that'll help you know, give you a better idea which ones you need to pull out. And then we're gonna have a couple more of those kind of on the side edge here that we're gonna need to take out as well. So if you look right here, um, we're gonna have two more of those fasteners. So I'm gonna sneak in back there and get those removed. It's a little bit tight, but it is doable. Also looks like we're gonna have one more right there, um, kind of attaching the mud flap to the underbody panel. So we'll go ahead and pull that out as well. And then it looks like we're gonna have a couple of these types of fasteners. So with these, you can take a big screwdriver and just turn them to the left. Sometimes they drop right off like this one did. Other times you might have to kind of pull down on the panel while you're turning this to get it to release. Looks like the other one's gonna be right here. And you're removing these. This looks like the only thing holding the panel in position, so. Kind of keep a hand on it while you're doing this. You should be able to grab the underbody panel and work it out from under our vehicle. Now we need to lower our exhaust a little bit. That way it'll give us some more room to work. Before you do that, you just want to take a strap and run it from side to side, tighten it up a little bit. That way this will help kind of support the exhaust and we can control how fast and how far we let it come down. To get the exhaust lowered, we're gonna have two rubber isolator hangers, which just like this one here. You wanna spray these down with some soapy water, some penetrating oil to help uh, make it a little easier. And then you just take a pry bar and we're gonna work one side of the hanger off of our exhaust. Be 
follow our exhaust towards the front, we're going to have another one right here. Loosen up the strap a little bit. That'll let us uh, pull our exhaust down to make it easier to work. Now we can remove our heat shield. So we're going to have two fasteners holding it in place. One's going to be right there. We'll take a 10 millimeter socket. Get that one removed. And if you look right here, we're going to have another one of those fasteners. Pull that one off, and then we should be able to kind of work the heat shield down and out from under our vehicle for the time being. Over here on the driver's side of our vehicle, we're going to have a ground wire that's attached to the bottom of the frame, and that's going to interfere with the hitch if we leave it there. So we're going to relocate it. We're going to remove this nut using a 10 millimeter. Pull that wire off and there's actually a pre-existing hole right here in the frame that we can use uh, as a new ground. What you want to make sure to do though, since this is painted, we want to knock some of that paint off. That way we have uh, bare metal and we get a good ground connection. So I'm just going to take a little sandpaper, just kind of work that area clean. That way we'll have proper contact. So with the paint removed in that area, now we're going to take the ground wire and take the included bolt and a flat washer. And run that into place. Looks like we're going to have a I have a tab right there. Put this tab right here to make everything fit nice and flush. I'm just going to take a pair of pliers and just kind of bend that straight. With that done, we'll take our bolt and our washer. On the up through there, we're going to take the nylon lock nut, put that on the other side of the bolt, and we'll come back with a 7 16 socket and wrench and tighten this down. At this point, we can uh, lower our carbon canister, which is this piece here on the driver's side. So we're going to have two fasteners a 10 millimeter bolt on each side of it. I'm going to grab our socket and pull this one out first. The other one's going to be the exact same right here. So lower this down and kind of just let it hang for the time being. So if you have any of these nut inserts left inside of your frame rail after you lower down the carbon canister, you just need to pull those out of the way. That way they don't interfere with the hitch. So we're not going to reuse those. And then what we can do is set up our relocation bracket. So you want to take the side that has the round hole, a little bit smaller hole, and you want this to set on top of the carbon canister itself. You want the angle to go up. And what you're going to do is take the bolt and a washer Drop that down. And you're going to follow that up with another washer and a nut. And we'll just get these on loose for now. So we'll set just like that. And I went ahead and just did the same exact thing over here on the side of our canister. Put that bracket on there and just loosely secured it using the same hardware combination. Now let's go ahead and go over our attachment points that we're going to use to secure the hitch. And they're going to be the same on both sides of our vehicle. And we're going to have a total of three. So we're going to have this hole here, this hole, 
as well as this one back here. So with that said, now what we can do is get our hardware ready and we can fish wire uh, into the correct attachment points. So we want to start with this attachment point first. You want to take your fish wire and take the coiled end of it and feed it up into position. And what we're trying to get it to do is come out of this hole here. So we'll work that around. Sometimes you get lucky and they drop right out. Other times you may have to kind of reach up in there and help guide it out like we did there. For this one, we're going to take one of these smaller spacer blocks slide that over. Once the smaller spacer block is slid over the fish wire, you're going to take a carriage bolt and thread it on to the coiled end. And you're simply just going to feed that hardware inside of the frame, pull on the other end of the wire. that bolt drops down. You can use the same technique and hardware combination for this hole right here. One thing to make this a little easier you can do is just kind of eyeball the length or the distance in between our access hole and the attachment point that we're using. And just put a bend in your pull wire. Sometimes that'll speed things up and make it a little easier. Fish that through. And guide that coiled end out. Again, small spacer block. And carriage bolt. Thread on there. that up and drop it down and last but not least for this attachment point we're going to do something a little bit different we're going to take your pull wire and the long or bigger spacer block put that spacer block on it Right on your carriage bolt. We're going to reverse fish wire these. So you're just going to take the head of the bolt, push it into the frame. Same thing with the spacer block. And make sure everything's sitting there nice and flush. get the hardware to drop down through and then we're just simply going to repeat this exact same process over on the other side of our vehicle. So now with the next set of hands we can take our hitch and put it into position. You want to start on the passenger side first so you want to kind of feed the pull wires into the corresponding holes in the hitch and we're going to feed it up there. We'll have to kind of raise this over our carbon can and just kind of hold it where it needs to be. Again, take your wires over here and get them lined up. This can be kind of tricky with this carbon can in the way. We'll just have to kind of finesse it in. going in the back and then you want to raise this up and you want to make sure that the carbon can brackets are going to be on the, on the bottom side of the hitch here. Pull 
once your bolts drop through, what you want to do is come to the very back attachment point, pull off the fish wire, take a conical tooth washer, make sure the teeth on the washer are going to face up towards the hitch. Put that over the bolt, then you're just going to take a hex nut. You want to get one started on each side, hand tight, that way the hitch will support itself. With the hitch supporting itself, with the attachment points here on the driver's side, we're going to have to connect our brackets to it. So you're going to take a wire, get those fed through, and we can kind of just try to get everything lined up roughly here. Once we have our brackets through, we can remove those pull wires and get the hardware started. And again, all of our bolts are going to receive a conical tooth washer and a flange nut. Now that all of our hardware is in place and hand tight, come back with a 7A socket and snug it down. With all of the hitches hardware in place and tight, you need to make sure and come back with a torque wrench and tighten everything down to the amount specified in the instructions. If you don't have a torque wrench at home, you can pick one up here at e-trailer, or a lot of times you can go to your local auto parts store and rent one from them. At this point, we'll come back with a 13 millimeter socket and tighten up the two bolts uh, holding the carbon canister to our brackets. The head of the bolt wants to spin on you whenever you're trying to tighten it down. What you can do is grab a 13 millimeter wrench, try to get on the, on the head of the bolt. I know it's really tight in here. Now we can grab our heat shield. We gotta get this trimmed out. Um, that way we can put it back in place. There is a diagram in the instructions. I'll give you some measurements. And I went ahead and drew that out here. Uh, what I'm gonna use to cut this, just a regular pair of 10 snips. You could use a Dremel tool or something else like that as well. But with that said, we'll go ahead and get this part uh, trimmed off. With the heat shield trimmed, you can put it back into place, line it up, and we're just going to secure it with this uh, right here. So take the fastener and put that on. That's because with this fastener, uh, one of the fasteners that we use to secure the underbody panel will connect there as well. So let's get this one going for now. At this point, we can go ahead, rehang our exhaust so we can lubricate the hangers again. We're just gonna kind of swing everything back in place by hand. Once it's supporting itself, we can go ahead and remove our strap. Now what we can do is trim out our underbody panel here. There is a diagram and in the instructions. However, I feel like that diagram is gonna have us cut out a lot more of our underbody panel uh, than we actually need to. So what I've done is just kind of held this up there against the bottom of our car and marked out a spot, which I drew here. And my thought is, 
you know, why cut out more than we absolutely need to? So I'm gonna cut this opening out, and if it fits, great. If not, not really a huge deal. We can always come back and, and trim out a little bit more. My thought is you can always remove more material, but you can't put it back. So we'll start with this area and uh, go from there. So this is almost like a cardboard type material. Um, and I'm just gonna use a regular pair of scissors to get it cut out. So I got our panel back in place. And it turns out that smaller area that we trimmed out is going to work. Gives our hitch enough space to come through and everything else. That said, I just got the panel installed uh, the opposite way that I removed it. I like to get all the fasteners going hand tight, and then we'll come back and start them all up. That'll finish up our look at and our installation of the draw tight max frame trailer hitch receiver on our 2021 Chrysler Pacifica.